What we saw this year was really unusual, but it was not unprecedented. A shift in weather patterns at the bottom of the planet has helped to shrink the hole in the ozone layer to its smallest size since its discovery. Higher temperatures in the stratosphere have closed the gap to 6 million square kilometers, a quarter of its peak size. We've actually seen really high September temperatures over Antarctica three times in the past 40 years. It happened following the breakdown of a weather phenomenon that most Canadians have grown to loathe. Warmer temperatures around the world shifted the polar vortex at the South Pole, and without cold air, ozone depletion slows down. When that does happen, we get a very small ozone hole. The ozone layer is a 50 kilometer wide shield that occurs naturally above the Earth, protecting us from the sun's harmful rays. Man-made chemicals get caught up in the winds at the equator and are directed to the south by the force of the polar vortex in the southern hemisphere. During polar night, it gets super cold, these reactions start happening, and then when the sun comes back, the ozone is depleted. But then the sun is back, things warm up, so then the ozone hole goes away. The ozone hole was discovered in 1985, and by 1988, every world leader understood the dire situation and signed the Montreal Protocol. And more than 30 years after that binding international treaty was signed, it still plays a vital role in the climate conversation. The treaty is working, the phase out is working, uh, and the atmosphere is, is recovering. While the treaty's goal was to limit damage to the ozone layer, the banning of certain chemicals led to an unexpected gain. If we had not phased them out, global warming would be 10 years worse than it is now. So the most important thing we've ever done so far to curb climate change has been to phase out the chemicals that were destroying the ozone layer. And as the Earth continues to warm, scientists are now trying to figure out how future generations will fare. The connection between global warming and the Antarctic stratosphere, is it's, it's less clear exactly what we would expect to happen in the future. And while some countries continue to use banned chemicals, the overall decline under the Montreal Protocol is a good reminder that when the world comes together for the greater good... CFCs are going down, and so eventually the ozone hole will disappear. Humanity can breathe a little easier. Reggie Chikini, Global News, Greenbelt, Maryland.